Thanks for joining us for this symposium. I'm Bill Rapisi, President and CEO of the Lymphatic Education Research Network. Lauren's mission is to fight lymphatic diseases through education, research, and advocacy. In order to win a fight, you first have to join it. So we ask, please become a supporting member of LEARN at lymphaticnetwork.org. And we hope you enjoy today's symposium. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kathy Shalou. I am a physical therapist and a lymphedema therapist. I'm currently working as the clinical director of outpatient rehabilitation services at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. I'm also the director of our lymphatic treatment center. And I've spent the last 15 years of my career treating almost exclusively patients who have lymphedema. So I'm here today to talk to you about how to keep your lymphedema under control given the current circumstances we find ourselves in with the COVID-19 home restriction, uh, social distancing, how do you manage your lymphedema under those conditions? Lymphedema is difficult to manage at the best of circumstances, never mind with the additional stress of worry with uh, in this infectious process, this pandemic, and then also having to worry about how to manage your lymphedema without the usual resources that you have. Your lymphedema therapist, a fitter, maybe going out, the support of friends and family, um, how to manage that. So I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the guidelines or things I think you should keep in mind when considering how, to, how your lymphedema is, is managed, and then we'll open it up for questions from you. So I'll be brief, um, but I'd like to go back to the beginning of how you were treated initially, the initial decongestive treatment of lymphedema, and remind you all of the four components. The first component, manual lymphatic drainage, uh, is a light superficial skin massage that helps to stimulate the lymphatic system and reroute fluid from areas of damaged lymphatics to areas with healthy lymphatics. Um, as your lymphedema therapist does this, may have also taught you how to do a sequence of self-massage that you can perform at home. The sequencing and timing of the, the, the manual lymphatic drainage is going to be different for everybody depending on where the healthy and damaged lymphatics are. So it's individualized to each person. The other component, and probably one of the most important components of treatment, is going to be compression. Initially starting with compression bandaging, and those are kept on day and night until the initial reduction is achieved, and then replaced or gradually uh, replaced with some kind of compression garment that's fitted for you. Uh, typically, patients wear the garments all day, and they may also be wearing a garment, a specific nighttime garment, or they may continue with the bandaging at night. And then at, at times, patients also supplement the use of compression garments and bandaging with compression pumps or other types of commercially um, available compression wraps to make it a little bit easier. The third component would be exercise and um, starting off with decongestive exercises that go along with the initial phase one treatment. And then as the initial reduction is achieved and patients are taught how to manage this on their own at home, they return to some of the normal activities that they've always participated in. So the initial decongestive exercises give way to a, a well-rounded exercise program that contains components of aerobic exercise, strengthening exercise, and recreational and leisure activities that you're, um, you prefer to do. And then skin care. Taking good care of your skin, making sure it's washed every day, dried thoroughly, lotions applied to make sure that there is no skin chafing or chapping um, and keep the skin well moisturized so it's less prone to skin tears and cuts. Overall, the goal for self-management, long-term care of your lymphedema is to prevent exacerbations, um, causing some increase in swelling, and also to prevent the risk of infections. Now we know that lymphedema is a lifelong disease. There's no cure. So the burden really is on everybody with lymphedema to take care of it lifelong. We know that you're going to be getting, um, going through periods where it becomes more difficult to control and we're going to see exacerbations. So your volume may go up or down, a cycle up or down just with normal day-to-day um, -day life. But if your lymphedema increases significantly 
uh, then you might need help in getting it back under control. So oftentimes we may see people come back for another course of decongestive treatment uh, to treat an exacerbation. But the goal primarily, if self-care, is to prevent that from happening, or if it does happen, to minimize it. So normally you would call your lymphedema therapist if you notice any worsening of your symptoms. Now under restrictions at home, what do you do to keep your lymphedema under control? So if you were used to keeping your lymphedema under good control and now it's gotten out of control, what do you do? So you're at home, uh, your lymphedema is worse. First step, I would say call your lymphedema therapist or call your physician um, with your concerns and it may be that they can talk you through some of the steps. First thing I would ask somebody to do is go back and look at the four components of treatment. The self-massage, are you doing the self-massage at home? Uh, and if not, let's have you restart that again, or maybe increase the frequency of doing that. If you're using compression, how many hours of compression are you using a day? Ideally, you should be putting a compression garment on first thing in the morning before your limb has a chance to um, increase, and then wear it all day, taking it off at night to, before you go to sleep. And if you were wearing a, a garment at night, then you would put the nighttime garment on to sleep at night. But what happens over time, sometimes we slack off a little bit um, and take the garment off. It's just driving us crazy. Halfway through the day, we've got to get it off and give ourselves some relief. Sometimes that does happen. And if it happens enough, um, en enough hours during the week, you're going to notice an increase in your, your edema. So the first step would be to go back and adhere to putting the garment on in the morning, wearing it all day, and then maybe even supplementing with um, additional compression at night. The exercise program, maybe that you were used to doing on a daily basis, now has been interrupted. Maybe you can't go to the gym, you can't go to your usual group, you can't perform your usual exercises because now you're at home or you don't have your usual uh, complement of friends or equipment. Um, so again, redoubling your efforts to try to get back onto a normal exercise routine. And it may be replacing some of the things that you really used to like to do with some things that will just be adequate to do at home. Maybe that you can um, use an online video or some kind of televised exercise program or figure out an exercise program to do on your own at home to replace the normal routine that you're used to being outside. And then skin care, also a, another component not to be overlooked. Um, so the four components, always go back to those and see, can we tweak any component to make it a little bit more effective? First question I would ask somebody if they're having trouble, is your edema stable? And by stable, I mean, has it changed any? Are the symptoms any worse or has the size or shape of the limb had changed at all? And the benefit to getting, taking regular measurements of your limb is so that you get to know the size of it and you'd recognize really early on, have there been any changes in the size? If there have, that would be a signal that you need to add one of the components or strengthen one of the components of your self-management program. One of the other things I look at, not only the size of the limb, but is there any pitting edema? You know, putting, uh, putting some pressure on your limb, does it leave an indentation? That would be an indication that there's more fluid collecting that should be responsive to compression, and you would want to make sure that you increase the amount of compression that you're using. The first step would be to increase the number of hours of compression, and a second step after that would be to increase the amount of compression. So it may be that you are wearing compression day and night, and it may be the added stress of the COVID-19 situation is adding to your difficulties in keeping lymphedema under control. Maybe you're not able to do your normal exercise routine, and maybe there have been some subtle changes. You wouldn't think it would be enough to cause an exacerbation of your lymphedema, but even still it's worse. So what you may want to do is just add some extra compression, either adding an extra layer of compression, an increase in the amount of compression that you're using, or even going back and pulling out those old short stretch bandages and using some bandaging over your compression garment, or maybe using more compression bandaging at night in lieu of your nighttime compression garment. It might be that you have to do a little bit more in the exercise depends on how far out of your norm your arm has gotten or your leg has gotten. So that's why it's helpful to know what your starting point is and being familiar with the normal state of your limb um, so that you can quickly recognize when it's starting to get out of control. So if your lymphedema is, is worse, the limb has gotten bigger or your symptoms have gotten a lot worse, it's, it's aching more, it feels a lot more heavy, 
um, you're having more pain, that would be another symptom that the even if the arm hasn't or the leg hasn't gotten any bigger, that the swelling is starting to accumulate. As soon as you notice that, you want to increase your the intensity of your, your self-management program. So first step, call your lymphedema therapist or call your physician um, and ask for um, maybe a, a telephone consult. Talk it through over the phone. Going back to increasing the manual lymphatic drainage, increasing the number of hours in compression, adding more to your exercise program, um, and um, seeing if you can do something that's a little bit more effective in keeping your lymphedema under control. So I'm going to sit back and open it up for questions, and I really would encourage you to, to um, ask me whatever. I think that most of what I've learned about lymphedema truly, even though I went through um, a lot of training in lymphedema and have kept up and done a lot of reading, most of what I really have learned about lymphedema, I have learned from you, the patients. Um, so if I can help answer any of your questions, I, I'd be really happy to do that. Looks like I'm live. Hello. I got one question from Colleen. Um, is pain and heaviness a symptom of infection? And um, pain can be a symptom of infection. Sometimes pain and heaviness are a symptom of lymphedema. The question is, your, is your pain and heaviness much different than your baseline symptoms? And if so, that should give you pause for concern. Generally, in um, somebody has an infection, we're looking for symptoms of heat, warmth, or hot skin, um, redness, rash, itchiness, along with pain. Uh, and those would be some symptoms you would want to call your physician. Especially at these times, you don't want to go to the emergency room or the uh, urgent care center because they're filled with people who have respiratory symptoms, flu symptoms, and that they may be ruling out for COVID virus. So you would want to call ahead um, to your physician and he would alert you as to what the next steps would be. We have um, lots of uh, people um, signing in, giving information about online exercise programs, and that's a good point, um, Christina. Um, there are some online exercise programs um, and support groups through Facebook um, and online resources that would be um, good resources for you. I hesitate to uh, endorse any one particular kind because everybody is at such a different level. Now is not the time to be starting with something new, but really continuing with the um, lymphedema management program that was set up for you um, with your lymphedema therapist. So you don't want to start something brand new that you've never done before without some guidance, um, but go with the exercises that you're used to doing. And if you can't do them, um, your normal setting is outside or at a gym, you want to try to adapt them so that you can do them at home. So I can't necessarily recommend one particular online resource, um, but um, there are multiple resources through the online communities and support groups that can help you. Um, I got a question about um, how much at risk you are from COVID-19. I don't believe that um, just having lymphedema will put you at any increased risk unless you also have some damage to your immune system or you're immunosuppressed for other reasons. Um, but just having lymphedema in and of itself will not put you at increased risk. I had a question from Kristen. I have only one sleeve that still fits and how many days can I go before washing it? And uh, I think most manufacturers and lymphedema therapists would also tell you that you really need to wash it every day. If you only have one sleeve to use, wash it out at night. Um, it's very important for two reasons. One, because any skin oils or lotion that you have on your skin gets off um, onto the material of the sleeve and can cause it to weaken the fibers. So you really want to wash it thoroughly um, in warm to hot water and make sure that it dries overnight. You can roll it, press it in a towel, and let it air dry overnight. The other reason that it's important to wash it every night is because it stretches out as the day goes on to accommodate your swelling and um, washing it overnight helps to um, get it back to its normal shape again. So you start the next morning with it back to its original size. If you go more than one day, you're going to be putting the sleeve on the next day in an already stretched out um, position so that it's going to allow your arm to swell or your, your leg to swell even more. So um, 
Somebody asked me, Mary, um, I'm trying to do some self-massaging um, after my lymph node transfer last February. Is the massage the same, only massaging down to the forearm instead of up? I'm wearing a sleeve up to the elbow. So Mary asked a specific question after having a surgical procedure. And rather than um, giving specific advice about a specific surgical procedure, because even lymph node transplants that transfer themselves can be done to many different areas, really follow the recommendations from your lymphatic therapist. I will say that the traditional pattern of manual lymphatic drainage often does change after a lymph node transplant. So you'd really want to be um, check with your lymphedema therapist so you know the specific pattern to do it. Um, I got uh, some, an online um, information from Libby who tells us that Prince Margaret Hospital out of Toronto has an excellent self-massage video that you can follow along with, and uh, PDFs are available all free. Um, EMAD, we have a lymphedema therapist who is in... Uh, lymphedema patient who's in crisis and hasn't been evaluated in person only through telehealth consultations. Do you recommend sending bandages and videos? You know, this is difficult because um, I'm in a medical center as well where it's really difficult to bring patients in to see them um, face to face. We're putting them at risk just to bring them into the medical center. But starting off new lymph treatment for lymphedema would be very difficult to do just by telehealth only. Um, that would have to be something they would really have to work one on one with a lymphedema therapist using some telehealth resources to do that. Um, you may be able to buy some bandaging supplies online, but you would need to work really carefully with a lymphedema therapist step by step to make sure that you are um, not making things worse. I think that you really would need to start with a new case of lymphedema with an in-person treatment for really the best effectiveness. Cassie is asking me a question about do I recommend um, pumps for patients out there and is there any brand you recommend more or less? Um, I'm going to get in trouble if I recommend one brand over another. And oftentimes, even though I might have one brand in mind for somebody because of a particular feature, oftentimes uh, insurance requirements will point me towards another brand. An insurance company might recommend um, one particular pump because they're covered um, under a certain under a patient's plan. Uh, I do recommend lymphatic pumps at times, um, but as an adjunct to treatment. I really don't think that anything can um, replace wearing a good, well-fitted compression garment, and so I consider a pump to be an adjunct. There are some cases where somebody is really not able to wear some kind of compression garment for whatever reason, um, and I may use a compression pump instead of um, a compression garment, but it's usually going in, we know that we're not going to get the results that we want with that. It's really an adjunctive type of treatment. So I, I recommend they're oftentimes helpful to be used. Once I've maximized somebody's compression through garments and other treatment, then I would add the pump on as additional help. But I really can't give you a recommendation for one brand over another. Um, so, so this online platform is new to me, so forgive me as I'm scrolling down with the, the questions. Um, if anybody is interested in a lymphatic a compression pump, um, we have um, we can put some information um, on the website afterwards to provide some links to several um, places where you can go for more information, but I really hesitate to recommend one brand over another. Um, we have Anne Marie who is calling in um, and asking for a link to the um, Prince Margaret Hospital video in PDF. Um, and then Suzanne wants to know what are good exercises to do at home. Um, used to do Pilates on the reformer machine and has um, lymphedema in the lower extremity. So um, any exercise is good exercise almost. Um, I, any exercise is better than not doing anything, but you really want to start slow and gradually progress. Now is not the time to be starting anything new, as I mentioned before, but you really do want to do some kind of regular exercise, at least on a daily basis, or at least five days a week. For lymphedema, it's important to do some kind of exercise because the muscle contraction that you get from doing exercise actually helps, has a pumping effect on the lymphatic system. So some form of exercise on a daily basis would be important. How much exercise? Um, it, the American Heart Association recommends 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week for most adults. Um, and 
from there, somebody with lymphedema may have to start at a reduced rate initially, but really guidelines would be that we would want to work you up to that level. Um, the intensity of the exercise is also something you want to be careful of, starting off at a very low intensity and building from there. If you've already been treated and you have an exercise program from your lymphedema therapist and are on a, a, a regular home exercise program, keep doing that. And if you can't, then adapt the exercise that you used to do out of the house to something that you can do inside the house. So there isn't one good exercise program that's good for everybody. It really has to be individualized. Um, you know, sometimes I joke with patients when they ask me and, and I say, truthfully, the, the best exercise program is the one that you're going to do. And sometimes we can set up an exercise program well-meaning and it just is impossible to continue with it at home. So we have to think about what resources you have at home. And instead of maybe going out to the gym, use some of the equipment that you have in, in the house. To, to keep doing your exercise program. If you're used to doing um, a walking program, um, maybe you can, and you don't have a place to walk outside that's safe to do, um, just walking in the house or even going up and down the stairs or even doing some steps right in place at a minimum level would be something you could individualize to the home. Um, and as several people have suggested, some of the online resources through Facebook and online support groups have links to exercise programs where you can exercise with the community online. Um, we have a CLT who is um, asking if um, we're recommending any treatment for patients in the clinic at this time and how would we differentiate between patients who should come in and who should stay home. And that's a question I struggle with and the rest of our staff here struggles with because as we're putting people at risk bringing them into the medical center, we're also looking at the risk that they um, they are in without getting treatment. So it's a fine line. So at this point, anybody who's coming into the medical center anyway for treatment and is already exposed by coming in, uh, we will go ahead and sit, see them at the same time, either just before or just after their appointment. For other patients, we're really taking it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, if somebody has a new episode of lymphedema and I worry that without treatment they're going to get worse, we'll arrange for them to come in and we use precautions, masking, um, putting masks on patients and staff and treating them. We don't have a waiting room, so patients come right up from the garage into the treatment area um, and we use some isolation to try to treat them apart from everybody else using some precautions. But that would be the exception, not the rule. I think for most patients we're asking them to stay at home. I hope that gives you some guidance. It's um, it's not a really clear-cut uh, formula that we're using. There's a couple of people who have sent in links to um, online resources, and I think rather than try to verbally give them to you, we'll make those resources available to you afterwards in written form so you can check back to the um, LEARN network and get some of the, that information. And again, several resources for people who want more information about pumps. I think what we'll do is make that information available to you afterwards. And we did get somebody who sent back information about the Princess Margaret Hospital uh, programs online. We can give you that information afterwards. Cassie's asking me about a diet for um, patients with lipolymphedema. Uh, and, you know, diet nutrition is really not my area of expertise. The, the farthest I'm going to go is tell you that you really should be eating a well-balanced diet. Um, healthy foods um, and um, giving specific nutrition recommendations is really outside the scope of my area of expertise. I would not want to do that. So I'm going to defer that question for now. Also had a question about um, exercise. Um, I'm trying to scroll down as fast as I can. Thank you all for sending in your questions. A very base, basic self-monitoring tool is available through, uh, somebody said, LymphoPress, LymphoTrack. One of the things it's a good idea to manage to, in helping to manage your lymphedema is to be aware of the size of your limb. So whether it be just, um, does a piece of jewelry still fit? Um, is the wristwatch too tight? Um, at a lower level, or are the sleeves of your shirt or pant leg becoming tight, um, or actually taking a circumferential measurement with the tape measure, um, knowing what your, your forearm measurement is, and then periodically remeasuring it if you don't have access to see your lymphedema therapist to get an accurate volume measurement um, at a lower level that would um, suffice. So then you at least know I've seen a half a centimeter increase or a centimeter increase or decrease here and there probably isn't um, as significant as if you see a three centimeter increase and that would be cause for concern. 
and also looking at where the lymphedema is building up in your arm. Is it more in the forearm? Is it more up in closer to the shoulder in the proximal arm or at the wrist? Is it your usual pattern of lymphedema or is there, has there been something that has changed? Um, Sarah is recommending uh, um, a good read called Lymphedema and Lipedema Nutritional Guide, uh, Foods, Vitamins, Minerals, and Supplements by Chuck Ehrlich, and I know that there's a link to that also on the Learn Network page. So thank you for that. A call out from my um, nephews Isaac and Ezra. Thank you. Um, and somebody is recommending the keto diet, and I really can't recommend um, that personally, um, but we have some people uh, writing and saying that they would like to recommend that. There are several res on the resource section on the Learn Network, um, there are several textbooks that you might want to reference um, that have some information, some really good information about diet written by experts um, far better than I. And we have a dietitian um, who has a book out on lymphedema, um, Jean Lamantia. Um, and then we have Kristen who's uh, giving me a question about someone she knows who has lymphedema and wears a sleeve on their arm, wanted to know if they could wear it while swimming. Uh, absolutely. We, I would recommend when somebody's exercising to wear their compression garments while they exercise. Because as you're exercising and the muscles are pumping, it's going to increase that lymphatic load. It increases the circulation to the body part and it increases the lymphatic load. So to be sure that we don't um, have some increased swelling afterwards, wearing a compression garment is a good idea. Um, now, if you're going to be wearing it in the pool or even in the ocean, you have to make sure that when you come out, you have another garment to put on afterwards so that you're not just stuck with the wet garment. Um, but I have also seen people who go to the beach, go into the um, ocean, come out, they keep the wet garment on, and they let it dry. Um, and they might do that repeatedly during a day at the beach, but then they also have to go home and, and put um, now a dry garment on at the end of the day. Somebody sent in a question about um, the compression sleeve getting loose. Not sure if it's because the sleeve is getting too old or the swelling is actually getting better. Is it okay to still wear it? Um, and this, uh, she said that her sleeve is only four months old. Four months might be time to order reorder a new sleeve. Generally, I, I use a ballpark of six months before the sleeve has to be um, made again, but um, that can vary depending on how much swelling somebody has and the type of garment somebody is in. But if it's getting loose, um, we really want to make sure that compression now is actually appropriately fitting. So whether the, the arm is actually getting smaller, um, then we probably do need a new compression garment. If you're not able to get out to get remeasured for a compression garment, you could probably pull out some of those old bandages that you used to use and um, add some compression bandaging over the part of the garment where it's slipping down to add a little bit of extra compression until you can get yourself fitted for a new garment. If there hasn't been too much of a change in your arm, you may be able to call on, online and just reorder your garments. But if there's been a significant change in the size of your limb, you really want to be remeasured before you have a new garment made. Somebody um, sent in a um, question about PT and OT or lymphedema therapists being able to offer telehealth visits. I have heard this across the country. There are some um, relaxations in the, the regulations for some of the insurance companies. Um, unfortunately, I'm at a, at a facility, a hospital facility, where we're not able to take advantage of that. But I knew, do know that private there are some private physical therapists and occupational therapists that are doing some telehealth visits. So if you're lucky enough to have a lymphedema therapist that has the telehealth capability, that's one way that you could keep in touch and get some um, up-to-the-minute advice. And you can actually use that opportunity to show pictures of what your limb looks like. Uh, I have a question about, I can't get to see my lymphedema therapist for MLD. Um, is my self-MLD isn't as effective, what else should I do? And self-MLD might not be as effective, and that may be why you're seeing a lymphedema therapist. 
I do know some patients um, continue with self MLD at home and along with everything else, and they do find it effective. But if it's not as effective and you're finding that it's harder to keep your lymphedema under control, then um, the MLD is not available to you by your lymphedema therapist, then you really have to take a look at what else you can do, maybe redouble your efforts in adding a little bit of extra exercise or using more compression than usual, really being very strictly adherent to wearing compression day and night. Um, if you're not able to use the um, MLD, I kind of look at the MLD compression exercise is almost three parts of the triad. If one of them is not working as well, you want to look at the other two components to see if you can beef those up a little bit. MLD, I know that for some people they find it very effective in helping to control the edema, and I've also had some patients who find it really the, almost the only thing that helps them control the pain, uh, whereas the, the compression garment might keep their swelling under control. The MLD is very effective for pain, and so um, not being able to access that um, is, is, is sometimes upsetting. But doing MLD on yourself in addition to improving the robustness of your exercise program or compression might help. Um, so Juan sends in a question and says there are now treatment protocols that leave out MLD. Um, they say it only has psychological benefits. What is your opinion, please? Well, it would be my opinion now. I don't know that there's any clear-cut evidence. Um, there is the complete decongestive therapy is, is still considered the gold standard for treatment. So that would be um, manual lymphatic drainage, compression, exercise, and skin care. Teasing out which component of that is most important um, is, is difficult to do, um, and there really is not a lot of good literature to tease out um, the components of MLD in all situations to be able to provide a blanket a statement. So I think that um, I definitely think it's helpful for the initial treatment of um, complete decongestive treatment, and I wouldn't skip it. Um, but for um, ongoing treatment, I think that um, we kind of make a decision based on each individual patient how much that contributes to the overall management. And some patients find it's not so effective ongoing, in which case then we just continue with the other components of exercise and compression um, to help keep it under control. Um, I have a question. Have I heard anything about the particular risk of COVID-19 for lipedema patients? Uh, and the spe suspected link between um, ACE2 receptors on fat cells and the virus. And I haven't heard any more specific information than that. Um, really, just the only um, information I have is that, in general, um, people who have lipedema or lymphedema are no more at risk um, for COVID-19 uh, unless they also have some other systemic problem that reduces their immune um, system or puts them at uh, immunosuppressed. If they're on other medications and they're immunosuppressed, that might put them at additional risk, but not from the COVID-19 specifically. But there's a lot we don't know about COVID, and it seems like day-to-day -day things are changing. Recommendations. Um, you know, in the past two weeks, um, even recommendations for personal protective equipment is, is changing. So now we're out on the street, everybody's wearing a mask. Um, and that wasn't happening two or three weeks ago. So I think we may hear more about that, and it's kind of exciting to see the research going in that direction. Judith um, tells us that she's uh, developed lymphedema in her face as a result of lymph node transplant to her legs um, using nodes from her neck. Um, and it's recent, so she can't be fitted for any type of compression garment. Um, thoughts. Um, but my first thought would be to go and speak to the, the lymphedema therapist that initially treated you um, after the surgery to talk about that. Um, at a, at a, you can't go in and get treat, get uh, measured for some compression garments. Starting off with some MLD might be helpful uh, or some exercises, but I think you would you definitely need to either call your physician or call your lymphedema therapist um, before you rec before we recommend any type of treatment. Um, and get asked, um, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, will this talk be available afterwards? And I think there'll be some kind of um, resource on the website, uh, at least for the question and answers. Oh, and I, the next comment says, yes, it will be. The other questions um, I often get about um, controlling their lymphedema is the um, amount of compression somebody has to wear. 
And um, most of the questions I've received from, from patients have to do with, should I be coming into the hospital? Should I be coming in to see my fitter to get remeasured, or can we put it off? And again, I have to weigh that on an individual basis. How dire is the need for getting a, a new compression garment versus how much of a risk coming in to see somebody to get fitted? Uh, and, and again, if your, your, your lymphedema hasn't changed very much, you may be able to call online and reorder um, the same size garment. And if you find that there's a big difference in your lymphedema, I would call your lymphedema therapist and get some specific recommendations about how to go about um, with an interim plan for um, compression garments before you get a new one. I have had some patients um, actually take their garments in, which is not recommended, I'll tell you that right now, but um, uh, with some seamstress skills. So you actually took their um, compression garments in as a stopgap measure while she was out of the um, out of the country on vacation. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but um, sometimes desperate um, situations call for desperate measures. Speak with your lymphedema therapist first uh, before you do anything, taking a needle or sewing machine to your, your, your garments, because anything like that will void the warranty if they're new garments and also could um, alter the pattern of um, compression. Um, for upper extremity exercises, early signs at home without equipment, do you recommend weight-bearing exercises or open chain? So for people who don't know what that means, open chain would be uh, when, when the arm, if I just move my arm up and down, that's an open chain exercise, as opposed to putting my hand against the wall and doing a wall push-up. That's closed chain with the hand against the wall. I think starting off just doing active exercise, meaning just moving your arms without any resistance, is the safest to start with. And if somebody doesn't feel any adverse effects, then you can progress to doing more um, adding more of a load. So obviously if I'm going to put my arms against the wall and do a wall push-up, I'm adding body weight on top of that. So it's adding resistance. Um, and if you're going to add resistance, you start off at a lower level and you progressively increase the resistance. Weight-bearing exercises um, are very good for strengthening. Even a weight-bearing exercise of standing up from your chair and sitting back down is a good strengthening exercise for the legs. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that that um, open chain um, or weight-bearing type of exercise, one is better than another. I think you might need to combine components of both. A couple of people had said thank you, and I have to say thank you to everybody who has written in questions. Um, I truly mean it when I say I have learned more from my patients than, than I really did in my education um, of lymphedema. I'm still learning every, um, every, every day, Actually, every week, um, at least once a week, I've learned something new about lymphedema that I didn't know. Uh, and I've been a, a physical therapist for over 35 years, so um, it's kind of exciting that we're still learning so much um, about lymphedema and the lymphatic system. Thank you, Marilyn. And Sarah, thank you. I don't see any other questions coming up. I do see one more question coming. There's a little bit of a delay um, to when I speak and when it actually gets broadcast um, over the computer. So, Megan, thank you. Um, so if I don't have any other questions, I really hope you all, I'm going to put a plug in for um, not quite lymphedema control, but really take good care of yourselves. Use your resources, use your family, even if you can only contact them online. Stress is has going to have a negative impact on our overall health and also our ability to manage lymphedema. So um, anything you can do to relieve your stress, take good care of yourself, eat well, get a good night's sleep, um, and be good to yourself. Um, all of that can definitely help, and it's uh, uh, going to add to your control of lymphedema. Somebody sent in um, a, a comment and said that... Um, Inspire Health is offering um, Zoom exercise classes for free for cancer patients. Um, um, so that might be a good resource and we'll put that on the, the website afterwards. I can't believe we've reached out to so many people. Any recommendations on easy exercises to incorporate for kids? Twin eight-year-olds, wow. Uh, with bilateral um, 
lymphedema in the legs and feet, playing, running, jumping outside um, usually helps, but we lost the yard. Yes. Um, you can do a little bit of running and jumping in the house, not running, um, um, but maybe a little bit of jumping in the house or um, try to find some online um, or through the television exercise that you can follow along with, oftentimes with music or turn it into a game. Um, it's really hard to do enough exercise to keep an eight-year-old um, busy and to use up that energy, that pent-up energy, um, and maybe sometimes just running up and down the stairs. Um, if you have stairs, if not, maybe a step stool and stepping up and stepping down um, um, exercises might help, or even just doing some exercises to music might help. Uh, I feel for you trying to keep uh, twin eight-year-olds busy um, without having to manage the lymphedema on top of that. Um, Larry sends in um, a question about the area around his healing ankle wound is red and bumpy. Um, should that area be massaged upwards? Uh, and, and I don't think I'm going to be able to give you very specific information about that because um, I'm going to have to say it depends. So somebody more familiar with that skin um, area, I think, should be contacted. So somebody who's actually seen it in person should give you the best advice on what to do there. Susan, great idea. My niece has a hopscotch pattern set up in her house and gets her kids to jump and move. That's great. Very creative. You know, um, Elementary school teachers and um, daycare teachers, they probably have the best ideas um, uh, about things to keep an eight-year-old um, busy. Um, Vicki sends in some information that patients can self-stream self-MLD for the upper extremity and lower extremities through the site. Healthy steps. Um, and again, anybody who sends in specific recommendations will try to capture those and make a resource list after afterwards. And Anne Marie um, sends in a, a link to a YouTube, vi YouTube video, and we'll make that available afterwards for um, kids, exercises for kids. Kathleen, thank you for that. Um, Fern says it's a very small house. Um, and we've, we've been in for three weeks. I'm afraid of losing the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> I would be afraid of losing my mind, so I really, my hat's off to you. Um, you're a hero in my book. Um, and other people are giving me some um, information. They're going to try to give us some resources afterwards. Um, somebody suggests a home trampoline, um, which is great for the lower extremities too. I know my two nephews use the um, a home trampoline. Um, they don't have lymphedema, but they use it to get their, um, get their need for exercise out. And we've got a nice um, website for self-MLD. Thank you. Fern says, thank you, Susan. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. I agree. Very creative. At what age, one, at what age can babies start CDT treatment and if MLD is good for them too? Um, so I don't have any direct experience in treating pediatrics. We're licensed at this facility for 15 and older. We're right across the street from Children's Hospital and there are partners in our lymphatic center and they do treat um, uh, children of all ages um, with, for, with lymphedema. Um, so they may... Um, Treatment starts with CDT and also incorporating, um, getting the family involved. So teaching parents how to um, start taking care of lymphedema from an early age. Susan says she uses a bouncy ball herself to keep lymph flowing. Um, that's a good idea. And we have some recommendations for some, um, other, some, some other online classes. So these are all great. I'm, I'm hoping that we can capture these afterwards and print out a list of everybody's resources. And LEARN, um, Mari re, re, uh, reminds me that LEARN posts a very good PDF on dealing with lymphedema, including garments during the COVID-19 pandemic. And when you signed onto the website, you may have seen that um, as one of the headers. Um, it's a very good synopsis. I think LEARN has quite a few resources if you really want to um, explore the webpage if you haven't already. There's quite a few resources for lymphedema therapists and for patients. And then some of the chapters of LEARN have also started some online um, programs and some exercise, cl exercise classes. Fern gets back to us and says that she had one trampoline and it worked wonders until they broke it. Um, and so that will happen over time. Going outside, um, 
venturing too far outside um, is really difficult to do now. Sometimes you can go outside just in the street, walking up and down in the sidewalk, um, wearing your mask. Um, depending on where you are in the country. Um, I know we're on a, a voluntary stay at home, um, but the guidance is really stay at home unless you absolutely have to go out. And um, just going out, if you're walking, remember to wear your mask so that you are you keep yourself safe not, and, and you also are um, safe for, for others too so that you don't put anyone else at risk or actually keep everybody's anxiety at bay. Um, because if you see somebody coming towards you that's not wearing a mask, you may be a little apprehensive. So to put everybody at ease, keep your mask on. Somebody asked me about my opinion on compression pumps during this time, and I think I had tried to answer it before. I may not have been so clear. I have, I, I, I like compression pumps. I use compression pumps sometimes. I would say they not the core of my suggested treatment for patients. It's more of an adjunct. I really want to get the main compression garment settled first and make sure somebody is maximizing the use of a compression garment and then I would use a compression pump as an adjunct, um, not as my main treatment. Great, some people are continuing to send some links um, and this one is also um, through the lymphatic network. Great. It's, it's really kind of heartwarming to see what a great community we have in, in lymphedema. So many patients who have written in and with suggestions um, and things that they've tried to help one another, and that's exactly what we need at times like this. We ne can't necessarily be there in person for people, but we can be there for each other online. And just remember that even though we're isolated from each other um, by space, we're not isolated really. We, we have um, the supports out there, even through electronic means or picking up the phone and speaking to somebody or, or connecting with somebody online or through email. Um, we translated the COVID guideline in Persian language for our patients. It's recommended for other languages. Um, yes. And a firm got back and says her boy's um, onset of lymphedema was at birth, and we were able to go to lymphedema therapy, and wrapping works much better for infant, toddler, small kids um, than garments because of how fast they grow and, uh, and because they have to be custom made. So absolutely, that's a really point well taken. Um, we know, um, adults know if you had to reorder your compression garments, how expensive it can be and time consuming to have to get measured and get them remade. Children grow at such a fast pace. So not only are they outgrowing shoes and clothing, but garments themselves too. So bandaging is um, much better, um, might be more efficient to use the bandaging. Somebody sent an email uh, question and you know, a question and answer. Just thank you for the talk from from Doha, Qatar. So we've got people from all over the place um, logging on. See what a, a big uh, we really is a small world um, for online to be able to have access to people from all over the world. Any more questions? Does anybody? If somebody doesn't have any questions, does anybody have an idea of what really worked particularly well for them at home in managing their lymphedema? Um, if you're not familiar at all with Ask the Expert and Learn, please check it out. That's one of the resources on the Learn um, webpage. Many questions have been answered, and they were wonderful um, uh, there with wonderful confidence and authority. And then French-speaking folks is a um, uh, web page here, a uh, URL that was given um, to us from Anne-Marie, and we'll make that available afterwards from the Lymphedema Association of Quebec. It's a good point for people who are who don't speak English as a native language. Getting access to the written materials um, could be very important. And again, if anybody has any good suggestions for things they've found particularly helpful, um, uh, Fern reminds us that by the time you have the child or infant measured and the garments sent out and come back, um, it may also be um, they also may be too too small. So bandaging can be adjusted as they grow. So yes, CDT and treatment is definitely part of the program for infants and children with lymphedema. And actually, that really sets the stage for lifelong management. When you grow up learning how to take care of your lymphedema, you're going to be able to take care of it better as an adult um, because it just becomes part of your lifestyle. And I know um, some of the heroes in taking care of those um, children with lymphedema are the parents, the mothers um, and fathers who are doing the lion's share of the work, taking care of them on a day-to-day -day basis. 
but it does pay off when they grow to adulthood and they're really able to take care of the lymphedema and keep it under such good control. Um, I've seen some adults come in with um, lymphedema over long, many years, and um, it always surprises me what good control they keep, um, how well controlled it is. And I really have to give credit for the parents. I also received um, a, an email from um, some garment fitters that um, may be able to do some work online, um, but they would work through a, a, a CLT. So even if you're a um, lymphedema therapist, you normally go in and get measured. There may be some online fitting that uh, they can do with you um, to reorder your garment. So I would say your first point of contact should be your lymphedema therapist or physician, whoever you have the relationship with. Um, and we had somebody who suggested I had my part partner take measurements while instructed via Skype by my therapist when my appointment was canceled due to the lockdown. Yes. And I've done that for people too, just trying to use Skype, even though we don't use telehealth officially for visits, just by um, Skyping or going online with somebody and telling them what measurements to take um, and using that those, kind of, those measurements to get a garment made. Kathleen, great, um, great um, suggestion. Meditation, mindfulness for patients with lymphedema disorders, fat disorders is a, pre a presentation and she gives us a, a link to a YouTube video and we can make that available afterwards. Uh, Anne Marie also is telling us about self-managing um, video for children and uh, for um, kids and children. Garment Fitter gives me some um, advice. She often suggests using non-elastic or Velcro closure garments. They can be helpful during a time of reduction or difficulties in donning. So they, those garments can be, um, the Velcro can be pulled tighter or a little less tight to make them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. So if you have times where your um, lymphedema really varies, um, they can be particularly helpful than a, a sleeve or a stocking that really is just one size really. And then Paul says a recommendation, recommends wrapping bandages over a night garment when full compression wrap isn't possible. Yeah, sometimes I, you know, having a set of bandages on hand just in case for times, emergencies, um, because if you're used to wearing a nighttime garment and a daytime garment and something happens, uh, really nothing beats um, the compression, the short stretch bandages. Um, Martha says it's hard to stay motivated, but don't lose hope. Uh, try to be keep a positive attitude and wear your compression garment day and night. Oh, yes. It really does help. Yes. And um, letting lymphedema get out of control, it starts off really slowly and then it creeps up on you. And sometimes you don't notice day to day, but you, um, uh, if you, if you let, let yourself slip at all, um, it can turn into a very big problem. Um, so Brooke tells me that as a lymphedema patient, um, she uses exercise, compression, and uh, she uses a flexi-touch pump very effectively as she struggles with self-MLD. Um, so she's using other components of her treatment um, with, with self-MLD rather than going to see a therapist. Great. Another link sent in for children. And again, I will try to make those all those links and all the helpful advice that people have sent in um, as a resource list available afterwards on the website. Wrapping bandages not only as a replacement for a nighttime garment, but sometimes just wrapping using the short stretch bandage over parts of the limb that are especially swollen. It might be that um, you know right around the um, the elbow, the the forearm just below the elbow is a point that really tends to collect fluid and sometimes using an extra layer of bandaging over a garment can also help if the garment isn't sufficient in controlling the um, lymphedema. This, this, uh, the COVID restrictions hopefully um, will lift at some point. Take hope that things will get better. We will get through this um, and things will get better. Fern gives us another pro tip for parents. There's a protective cloth uh, to go under the bandages. Um, knee highs are fantastic and the money you save is unbelievable. Not sure if they'd work so well in adults. Um, Manuela sends in a um, question about what's the method that you normally use and I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, so for CDT, manual lymphatic drainage, compression bandaging exercise, um, I'm not exactly sure I understand that question.
but for home management program, I would recommend that patients do some kind of self MLD, uh, compression and exercise. Marin gives a suggestion about some kind of international interest in this session. Uh, maybe uh, some uh, colleagues from around different countries might be um, interested in getting together to exchange ideas and resources. And I'm sure that uh, the LEARN will definitely take that suggestion um, and think about how to make that happen if it's possible. Uh, somebody sends in a suggestion that nighttime garments can be worn in low activity, not just nighttime, for a comfortable garment for self-quarantine time. Um, that's also something um, as, a, as a relief. If uh, skin irritation is an issue, sometimes I would have somebody take their garment off short, for a short period of time and put a nighttime garment on to give their skin some relief and reduce some of the chafing um, if they're not going to be very active. Now, obviously, if somebody's going to be getting up and, going, and moving around and doing exercise, I want their full compression garment on. But a nighttime garment can also, as, as he says, um, be used for low activity periods. And it might be a combination, although um, nighttime garments can be worn for short periods during the day or low activity level, um, and then also bandages can replace uh, garments during the day or at night. Somebody also suggests dry brushing, another good uh, self-MLD technique to use that's in our toolbox. Yes, at times like this, you go back to the basics, what you have always done in the past, and pull out what's worked and what you maybe initially tried initially with uh, your initial CDT treatment and pull it back out and start it back up again. I haven't seen any good studies um, on the dry brushing, um, but maybe Susan has, um, who sent it in. And by good study, I mean a really well-designed uh, randomized control trial, although I've seen some, um, um, some people, I've seen some other studies show success with case studies and such, but not really... Um, we don't really have good robust evidence for MLD to begin with, um, so as far as using MLD over um, dry brushing or vice versa, I haven't really seen any good evidence for that. Thank you everybody for tuning in, um, giving your questions, giving your suggestions. Um, everybody stay healthy, be good to yourself, be good to everyone else, and keep your lymphedema under control, wear your garments. Thank you.